Hey everyone! Today I'm going to be taking some Joy-Cons and a Nintendo Switch case and I'm going to customize them. This is a project that I've been wanting to do for a while and I've just been putting it off mostly because I was scared to take apart the Joy-Cons because they're expensive and I didn't want to break them, but I finally did it, so I'm going to show you guys how I did it. So let's get started. I'll include a list of tools and materials I used for this project down below along with affiliate links. I started with these neon yellow Joy-Cons. If I did this again, I'd probably start with more of a neutral color, like the gray ones, but I just got the neon yellow ones because they were the cheapest. So first things first, I took these suckers apart. I'm not going to go into detail on how to take them apart, instead I'll leave a link to a few guides on how to do it. They're a lot more detailed than I'll probably ever be. The only thing I couldn't really find when it came to taking these things apart was how to remove the Z trigger buttons. And of course, as I was recording this, I was concentrating super hard on how to take these pieces apart and I wasn't paying attention to whether or not I was on camera. Sorry about that. I believe that there are two springs that go with it and you can just carefully pry the button off. Unfortunately, when I removed this piece, I ended up losing one of the springs, which sucks, but the button still works fine with just one spring, which is good for me. But I'll probably go back and buy new springs to put back in later. One thing I highly recommend doing is to be very organized with all of the screws and whatnot. I used tape to help keep similar screws together, labeling them as I went along, and I put all of the pieces of one Joy-Con into one Tupperware and the other Joy-Con into another Tupperware. I still had to reference the photos of people taking the Joy-Cons apart in order to put everything back together, but it was a lot smoother and went a lot faster than if I just threw everything in the Tupperware without labeling things. So here are all the pieces that will be painted. For each Joy-Con, there are two outer shells, this middle piece, and the SL and SR buttons. To prep them for paint, I sanded all over the surfaces that will get painted. I used a fine grain sandpaper that wouldn't leave too many deep scratches on the surface. I brushed off all of the dust from sanding, and then I attached the buttons onto some tape and taped up the middle piece so that only the tiny sliver that needs to be painted is exposed. I taped the pieces onto a paper plate and brought them outside to paint. At first, I was going to paint a layer of gray primer or something, but at the last minute, I decided to just go with the final color right off the bat. Thankfully, this stuff covered it well. I was low-key tempted to go buy some of that mood ring color changing magic liquid that Evan and Caitlin used to paint their Xbox controllers and many other things after I watched their video from a couple weeks ago. That stuff was so cool. You should definitely go check out their video where they customize their controllers. Instead, I went with a rose gold color, mostly just to match the case that I have already. As usual, with spray paint, aim to go with multiple thin coats. The first coat always looks terrible, but after a couple coats, it should start to get good coverage. It's very hot here where I live, so the spray paint dries pretty fast. I was basically spraying the first layer for each controller, and then once I was done with the second controller, the first was already ready for the second layer of spray paint. And so on and so forth. If you live in a colder area or are doing this in colder weather, you may need to wait a bit longer between coats. There should be more precise instructions on the can of spray paint that you can refer to as well. With this initial pass, I did about three coats. Once that was dry, I took them inside to sand some more. Spray paint is hardly ever perfect the first round, especially when you're spraying out in your backyard. All kinds of stuff can end up stuck in the paint. Or if you didn't do light enough coats, there can be drips or cracks or whatever that you need to fix before continuing on. Or not. I mean, it's your life. But I was trying to get the spray paint as perfect as I could. I used a fine grain sandpaper again and lightly sanded over the pieces that needed it until they were nice and smooth again. And then I took them outside one more time to lay down another layer of spray paint. I let those dry for at least 24 hours and then moved on to the next and most fun part, drawing on them with Posca paint pens. I knew I wanted to do a Ghibli theme. In my original design I wanted to do was simply just black lines and I wanted to just doodle all of the characters onto the controllers and onto the case. 
but I did a couple sketches of what I wanted the characters to look like, and I wasn't really digging how it was looking. So I decided to go with plan B and just do a bunch of soot sprites along with the colorful sugar treats that they eat. In the end, I'm super happy with this design. One of the main things to remember is that if you want the design to look like it's wrapping around the controllers, you need to hold them together like so while you draw onto the edges. So once I was done with the Joy-Cons, I moved on to the case. I wanted to make these things totally match with each other. Before drawing and painting on this, I wanted to tape over the fabric parts of this case to protect it from the spray finish, eventually. Unfortunately, the tape just wasn't sticking onto the zipper tape, so ultimately I just tried sticking the tape onto the plastic zipper teeth instead, which ended up not working either. Thankfully, in the end, the spray finish didn't gum up the zipper or anything, which is what I was worried about. Anyway, basically I just did what I did to the controllers. I drew on the sit sprites and then added the colorful sugar candy things. I found that the paint pens scratched off pretty easily from the case, so I had to be very careful when drawing on the other side. The easiest way to do this was to unzip it and hold it from the inside while I painted on the other side. Once these were all done, I brought everything outside to spray the finish. When spraying over Posca paint pens, you need to be sure to use acrylic spray finish. Other stuff can possibly react to the paint and cause it to bleed, which would suck after spending so much time drawing the design. I used a satin finish clear acrylic spray. I didn't want them to be matte, but I also didn't want them to be super glossy. I feel like Joy-Cons are usually more of a matte finish, so I wanted to go with a nice in-between. Like before, aim for multiple thin coats. I believe I did about three. I was a little concerned with using this spray finish for the case. It's kind of a weird in-between of a hard and soft case. I mean, I guess technically it's a soft case, but it has some rigidity. Like it can hold its own if you threw it into like some luggage or something, but it's still kind of soft where you could poke at it and it'll give. I was worried that the finish would become brittle once dry and end up flaking off the case. In the end, I was able to do enough coats to protect the design so it wouldn't scratch off, but the finish isn't thick enough to make a layer that's brittle and breakable, if that makes sense. Basically, this stuff worked out a lot better than I expected, and if I were to do this again, I'd use the same stuff. Anyway, once everything was dry, it was time to reassemble the Joy-Cons. Again, I referred to the guides I mentioned earlier. Having all of the pieces labeled helped a ton, but I still found myself getting to a certain point and then having to disassemble it again because I missed connecting one tiny thing. As I mentioned earlier with the Z trigger button, I think I lost a spring, but thankfully I had at least one for each of them, and the button seems to work just fine with just that one spring. Eventually, I'll buy replacement springs and go back in and fix those. Also, I noticed that you could still see the original yellow of the controller peeking through behind the Z button, so I went back and colored that part in with a black Posca paint pen. I didn't bother doing another pass of the spray finish here. I figured that spot wouldn't get too much wear and tear, and then if it did somehow, I would just dab on a little bit more black paint. That's one instance where using gray Joy-Cons would have been nice. I feel like I wouldn't have had to touch it up if only gray was showing through. The neon yellow is super obvious though, so I had to. I also found that after putting both of these together, I had one extra screw for each controller, which was super confusing. Of course, I labeled every screw except this one, and I couldn't figure out where it went. 
Eventually, after watching and rewatching a couple of the Joy-Con disassembly slash reassembly videos, I realized it was the screw to attach the side rail thing to one of the sides of the controller. Duh. You just have to position the rail in a weird way, and then it's obvious where that screw goes. Anyway, once these were all put together, I put them onto my Switch and messed around with all of the buttons to make sure everything was working correctly, which it was. And then, they were done. Or were they? So, when you connect your Joy-Cons to the Switch, they're color-coded. If you have gray ones, they show up as gray on the console. If you had red and blue ones, they show up as red and blue. And these ones that I have came as neon yellow, so they show up as, you guessed it, yellow on the console. I found this cool program where you could connect your Joy-Cons and change the color of them. And it writes it into the code of the controller, so they will always show up as these colors, even if you go to your friend's house and connect to their Switch. It's pretty cool. I'll leave a link to this program down below. The only sad part is that it doesn't work on Mac, as far as I'm aware, so you'll need access to a Windows computer or laptop, and it has to have Bluetooth. Basically, you connect your Joy-Con onto the computer via Bluetooth, and then open the program up. Since you're going to be changing stuff on the controller, I highly recommend backing it up first. This takes about 10 minutes per controller, but if anything goes wrong, it's nice to have the backup just in case. Once that's done, click on body and button color, and it'll load this color picker. It kind of takes a little bit of time to load, but just be patient with it. On the right, you can see that they have the retail color sets, and you can click on those if you just wanted to set your controller to any of those. It looks like you can set your own too, so pick your colors. You can go through and pick it on the little color gradient thing that they have, or if you know the hex code, you could just type that in. Once you've picked your colors, then hit OK. It'll take you back to this screen, and you can see what your controller looks like now. Looking back, I might want to go and do this again to make the body color a little bit pinker. I think I made it a tad too light. It almost looks white. Anyway, click on Write to Colors, click Yes, and then it's done. Disconnect this controller from the Bluetooth, close the program, and then repeat for the second controller. Here you can see me connecting the controllers to the switch, and you can see that it's displaying the colors that I changed them to. Another cool detail is that when you slide your controllers onto the sides of the switch, the body color of your controller flashes on that side briefly. So yeah, here's my custom case with my custom Joy-Con controllers. I'm so in love with how they turned out. I can't believe I put off doing this one for so long. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all of that good stuff. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, there'll be links to all of those down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping me produce this video. If you like my videos and have learned something from them, please consider supporting me on Patreon to help me continue to make them. It's totally optional, I'll still be making videos either way, it just helps me be able to put out better stuff. A link will be down below, or you can just click up here in the corner.